that should be starting. And then of course I get to figure out how to sit, share my slides. Okay. Can everybody see my slides? Yes. Yeah. Great. All right, welcome everybody to the first of many very action-packed TLTC Faculty Center workshops this week. Thank you for coming. Um, Ed and I are going to talk about um, Collaboration U today, and um, I'm kind of going to do the overview of what it is, and Ed is going to give you guys an in-depth tour of what it looks like from the student point of view. So um, I can see a bunch of people just joined us. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Jennifer Jensen. I'm the scholarly communications librarian, and um, I think you guys all probably know Ed Beck from the Teaching, Learning and Technology Center. So um, also, if anyone has questions anywhere along the line, this is um, for you guys. So please feel free to pop questions in the chat, interrupt us. We're going to do kind of like a halfway point too, where I pause my overview and then before we get into Ed's section, there'll be time for questions there too. So um, whatever you guys are comfortable with. OK, so here we go. Any questions to start? I don't see any hands. All right. So as I said, today we're talking about Collaboration U. What I'm hoping or we're hoping that you guys are going to get out of this um, session today is, of course, Ed and I can't help but always talk about OER, Open Educational Resources, what they are and how they can benefit you as instructors and your students. So we're going to just do a very brief um, reminder about what those things are. We're going to talk about Collaboration U, which is an OER mini course offer, offered by the um, SUNY Ready to Adopt catalog and produced by or created by the Carnegie Mellon Open Learning Initiative, which we'll talk about. And then we're hoping by the end of all this, you'll kind of know what Collaboration U is and how you could get signed up, which the answer to that for anything related to OER is always email at or gen, but there are other ways you could get started too if you really wanted to. So we'll show you that. So as a reminder, um, Open Educational Resources or OER are um, the important factor about them is that they are openly licensed materials, which generally makes them low or no cost. They are shareable, adaptable teaching and learning materials. So in this definition here, you can see they can be anything from textbooks, to lab workbooks, homing, homework systems, videos, and more. Um, and it's important that they are openly licensed because that means you have permission as a user to copy them, share them, distribute them to your students, adapt them, and make them your own for your own course. And you're going to see how that um, becomes important with the example of Collaboration U and some of the other materials that we're going to talk about. And um, the Creative Commons reference here is usually the open licensing is done with, um, or often it's done with Creative Commons licensing, which tells you what's open and what's not. The benefits of using open educational resources, there are multiple benefits to your students. There's lower barriers to access. Um, if you're offering an OER material that is online and there's a printed version, we can, we can offer it printed through the bookstore for a low fee that covers the cost of printing um, and free online linked to your Blackboard course or however you provide your course materials. That means it's available the first day of class. They're not ordering the book the second week of class and waiting for it for the fourth week of class. They're going to have it equally accessible for all of them the first day. Of course, it minimizes costs if it's a no cost material or often very low cost. Um, and they can these materials can be retained forever for the students. So instead of renting a textbook for the period of your class and not having access to it for the rest of their college career or their their actual career, um, they can retain these materials forever. Some of the benefits for you as instructors, as I mentioned, you can adopt these existing materials or you can adapt existing materials to make them work for your style, for your class to mix and match different OER materials. They can be really versatile in terms of the kind of materials they are. They can be all digital, they could be all printed, 
they can be a mix, they can be an online course like we're going to talk about today. Um, and of course, then when they're online, they can be integrated into Blackboard. So benefits of OER. Um, many of the sort of high quality OER that we, well, actually everything we're talking about today is available through the SUNY Ready to Adopt catalog. This is through SUNY OER services. Um, these are OER materials that have been kind of vetted from the SUNY system and um, they've been reviewed. They often have extras that come along, as you can see in the definition here, um, where maybe they're going to have instructor materials, they're going to have test banks, they're going to have PowerPoints you can use or adapt. Um, and again, in our example for Collaboration U, you're going to see some of that. And then we have two, actually, I'm going to go back one. We have two main partners um, through the SUNY Ready to Adopt catalog. Many of you, if you've done anything with OER, you've probably heard us talk about Lumen Learning and all these Candela Waymaker examples in the image here are Lumen products um, through our partnership with Lumen Learning. They help us with some of these um, extras and the services and the signing up process for Lumen products. Well, the other kind, the other partnership we have is the OLI reference here, Open Learning Initiative th um, through a partnership with Carnegie Mellon. And that's mostly what we're going to be talking about today. So the Car Carnegie Mellon's Open Learning um, Initiative. I can't see my notes, Ned, Ed. <laughs> anyway, I'll remember it, right? Take a breath. The Open so, Learning Initiative um, was started by Carnegie Mellon, and the big name over at Carnegie Mellon that's been working on this for a really long time is Norm Beer. He is a educational researcher who wants to keep using the research around online and open education into the building and development of the uh, Open Learning Initiatives, the OLIs, uh, courses that they build. And so the thing that he really focuses on and that the whole OLI initiative focuses on is making online learning active learning. And they do that in a very specific way. They do that by interjecting feedback, even in like multiple choice questions. And we'll show you that later. We'll show you like what an act, what a, a typical activity looks like in an OLI course um, because it's all kind of scenario based or um, asking students to put themselves into each other's shoes. Um, and it's something that I really um, admire and respect as, uh, as someone that tries to do this often. All right, and so here's their website too, if you wanted to check them out and see kind of what they're working on, the Carnegie Mellon OLI pages here to look at. Um, Okay, so oops, this is what we're here for, right? What is Collaboration U? Um, you can see there's already some discrepancy here. Uh, for some reason, SUNY's Ready to Adopt catalog calls it Collaborative U on the page, but it all links back to OLI's Collaboration U. Um, so either way you see it, we're all talking about the same thing here. Um, so Collaboration U from OLI is a two unit mini course and it's an OER. So for our students, um, through our partnership with Carnegie Mellon, it's free to our students and all the um, extras. So all the, te the tests and the grade books and all that stuff is free to our faculty too and free to our students to access. Um, the point of Collaboration U is to um, embed in a course that has a significant team project to use Collaboration U at the beginning of the course to teach basic introductory sort of teamwork skills. So we're going to talk about like diversity skills, conflict communication skills, recognizing as a student your own strengths and weaknesses in a team and how to communicate about working together. Um, again, you're going to see more details with Ed soon about that. Um, and the overall experience is um, designed to be about a two or three hour experience used over a few weeks, if that's how you want to do it. Um, everything can be done outside of class period. It doesn't have to be. Um, but it is designed for the students to do some independent work and sort of like homework and then to do some in team work, which you could either do in the classroom in their teams, their actual teams or have them do as their first team meeting, for example, something like that. And again, every, all of this is available through SUNY OER services. 
Um, the way that I was introduced to Collaboration U was um, at a SUNY OER, OER Leeds meeting recently. The, a couple of faculty members from the chemistry department at Binghamton University came to describe how they retrofitted an entire class, turned their general chemistry course, their big general chemistry courses for non majors, but for pre med students actually, um, into they started using all OER materials and they want they wanted to describe kind of how they did that and one of the oer materials they ended up using for their chem 104 105 and especially the 106 lab associated with their first and second semester first year class um, so the lab integrates a course undergraduate research experience they call it a cure um, and it's a team research experience in that lab and they had had trouble getting the teams kind of going in the past, and they found out about Collaboration U. And in the fall of 2020, they integrated Collaboration U into the teamwork part of this lab and had a really positive experience. They also used it in their newly restructured um, Chem 111 class, which is a chemistry class for engineering majors, which engineering majors use a lot of team projects. Um, and so they thought that was going to be really helpful for them early in their career to have also this team building um, aspect to the beginning of this work. And by the way, these um, slide images are from the presentation given by Alexa Silva and Clarice Kelleher at Binghamton University. Um, so I just want to give them credit for that. So when they revamped the sort of general chemistry class, they ended up integrating four different kinds of um, OER materials from the SUNY Ready to Adopt catalog. Collaborative U or Collaboration U, as we're going to talk about, a STEM readiness module, which is basically workplace communication for STEM students, an environmental technology um, hazardous materials module, and then they use the Lumen Chemistry for Majors textbook, which they adapted and changed the name of to not be Chemistry for Majors, but general chemistry one and two and adapted a little bit for what they needed for this course. So they had this new suite of OER materials and then on top of that they used an open source homework system called Lawn Kappa and library resources for research skills and information literacy education. Um, Alexa Silva when she was describing this new group of OER materials that they were using said that of all of this for the general chemistry course she found that the Collaboration U was the most effective thing that they had to help students get sort of into the mindset of working in a team and had, they, they saw big gains in, in what kind of outcomes at the end of the year after using this. So I hope you guys can see this okay. This is kind of an example of their syllabus, um, their modified syllabus. I zoomed in so you can't see all the levels of the different um, types of OER as they went through the syllabus. But actually, they used for the first four weeks of the class, they used the pretest and the post test, which are part of the Collaboration U um, syllabus. And then they used the two units of content from Collaboration U. As sort of a general idea of how this works, is the first content unit is about getting to know your team. The first three modules there are all uh, working in a hypothetical uh, team situation where the students individually go into the program and they usually watch a video or they read through text messages or they they see a hypothetical team situation and then after learning it a, a bit about you know how teams work together they have to then answer questions which ed is going to show you some of this um and then they get like immediate feedback on are they understanding the concepts? Is this kind of like the right way to go about working as a team? The last module, module five in the, the first content unit here is an is not a hypothetical team work. Uh, it's actually a in team activity. It's a kind of a mix of an icebreaker and applying the concepts that they learned in the homework sessions. Same thing with the unit three basic conflict communication. All the first modules are working in the hypothetical individual way where they do their homework online themselves. And then module 11, the conflict communication practice is an in-team activity that they do with their actual teammates. And again, is like helping them work towards um, creating this, this teamwork dynamic. Then there's a post-test.
Um, the OLI system is pretty user friendly from both the student and the instructor perspective. This is an example. Um, normally the students names would be here on the left side, but they've been blanked out obviously. But you can see after the, the students have gone through all the work here, each module has a column and you can see who your troublemakers are, who is not doing any of the work. Most of the students are doing it. They had 900 students in these classes, so they really had to keep track of this. But it's an easy way to be able to tell who who's doing the online homework assignments and who's not doing it. Hey, and Jennifer. Then, oh, yes. Hi. Hi, um, Dave Drzezinski. Uh, listen, when they're doing this group work, are they mm -hmm. is the course set up for them to do, to do this group work synchronized or asynchronous? Yes, great question. So the in team group work is meant to be done synchronously. So it would be done at their first team meeting that you would say everyone needs to get together with your team this week, or you could do it as the first class period and say, these are your teams get together. And here's so here um, on this next slide is that all the materials that come with the course and the number two and number three are like the handouts. So you could PDF send them digital copies of the handouts to the teams to do it synchronously together for their first assignments or you could hand it out in class and have them do the teamwork in class. But the actual in team work is meant to be done synchronously. Everything okay. else, all the the first sections are all meant to be asynchronously done individually by the students. So they watch the video themselves. They answer the questions themselves and then they come together for the last module is the in team assignment. Does that make sense? Yeah, OK, OK, OK. So yeah, and then this was just a slide to kind of show you like they they give you what you need to get started as an instructor with this class. There's not that much. It's a very small mini course, as you say, but um, you know they give you an example of how to integrate it in your syllabus. They give you the handouts that you need for the in-team activities, and then if you wanted to do more assessment than what the program does already um, automatically through all the online work, there's ideas here um, that they give you for doing further assessment. So that is my overview. Are there any other questions or general questions before Ed sort of takes you on an example of how this works for the student's point of view? I'm going to stop sharing, right, Ed? Oh, there you I'm sorry, folks, I'm having a little bit of a problem. Um, I'm just going to leave the meeting and re-enter the meeting. Um, I'll be right back. OK. I am not being facetious when I ask this question, but can we um, uh, do this in teams across campus with faculty and staff? I'm not joking. This would be great. Sure, we can. We could absolutely do that. The faculty center could organize it. <laughs> Just need to figure out how to put 48 hours in 24, but yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your patience, everybody. I just, I, I have a new computer and um, it was not letting me share my screen on Teams. Can we all see my Blackboard? Yes. Yep. So the way um, any of these um, OER resources integrate into Blackboard is you'll just get a, um, a special link that you'll put in for your students um, and when they click on it, it will automatically sign them in to the OLI course. So here we have, you can see um, I'm on here and I'm of course looking at this as an instructor. So you can see I have access to my grade book, access to the syllabus. I have places where I can go in and do my grading or look at my learning objectives and see where students are doing well or not doing quite so well. But I'm going to jump into the course syllabus. And we're going to jump to the end of this course a little bit. Um, you can see when you go through here, um, it starts focusing on teamwork and it's all phrased very positively. Towards the end of the course, they start to focus on, okay, how about conflict management? How do you even start to recognize you're having a conflict when you're in a group? What are some strategies for getting out of conflict? Let's focus on active listening. And then one of the activity, one of the things they want you to focus on is the idea of assertive messages. 
how you can you assert yourself in a group in a non-threatening way that can help move things forward. And I'm going through this not because this is a um, not because that this is a um, webinar on collaboration, but because it kind of shows OLI's philosophy when they wrote or created this course. What we have is a small bit of content. Um, basically, what they want students to walk away from this um, module or this small section of the course is what is an assertive message, and they break it down into three things. They want a description of what the behavior is that the other person is doing. They want your personal emotional response to it and then follow through with what does this do to the group? And if you think about that, that's actually a very small concept. Three things that are part of what they're deter what they're calling it an assertive message. So what does what does OLI do in the in, in its design of the learning materials? We have about a page worth of text. And then we jump right into what they call their learn by doing activities. And so I'm just going to walk through with you this little this little scenario that they created. Um, about a team member who keeps missing meetings. Um, and so they kind of just made this little um, infographic or they made this little um, video with questions on it to kind of help describe what's going on. So with you guys' permission, I'd like to just go through that with you. So we've got two students here. We've got Emma and Grant. And Emma's going to be kind of sticking up for the team, but she's going to keep messing up according to OLI's um, collaborative strategies. Um, so we see question one. Emma's failed to use good conflict communication here. Um, check all that apply. What, what is Emma doing that's a little bit not using the strategies that they focused on? Remember, assertive messaging had three points. It said, what is the behavior? How does it make you feel? How does it impact the group? So I've got a multiple choice question here where I can check multiple answers. What is Emma not doing here? All three. Okay. Rhea says all three. Okay. OLI, remember, the one of the OLI's goals is to give you feedback throughout the entire process to let you know immediately whether you're right or wrong. And they actually wanted to remind us, hey, when you're in an assertive messaging situation, you don't want to come off too strong. So it's not that it's not strong enough. It's for them, it's, it doesn't show how Emma feels. And she started with you. You missed last week. So they're going to go through and, and, and say, like, how do we think that this should go out? So what should Emma do to improve this a little bit? I'm going to try this one. Uh, thanks for, for someone volunteering and trying this one. I'm going to say she needs to clarify her feelings and the problem. Um, and show she heard and understood Grant. Grant's telling us he's got tons of work. So that's that's what OLI says we should be doing. So let's see how they let's see how they um, change this as we continue on. OK, so here's their suggested message. When you miss meetings like last week and today, our team falls behind. We're getting worried. This now has like their three things as part of this message. It's focused on the behavior, not the person. It tells what is happening. Our team's falling behind, and it lets him know lets him know how he's how she's feeling or how the team is feeling. Okay. So, Grant says, "I know. Me too. This was the worst week of the term for me. 
Emma says, well, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> they think that she's messing up a little bit again. So now we're going to have questions on how could we fix this answer? What 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 do we want um, to move forward right now? So how did Emma by saying, well, what do we do without offering a solution? They think they think that she's escalating the system. It's OK to be a question. Um, it just needs to be helpful, a helpful question. Um, what could Emma do to improve? The communication, what do we think? Propose a solution. Rhea says propose a solution. I would add active listening. Anyone else? Sarah Portway's typing. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah agrees. Sarah agrees with Grant. OK. OK, so we were right. Use active listening to reflect what Grant said. Propose a solution. So remember, we jumped right to the end of the course. The previous unit was on active listening. So it's saying, hey, don't forget what we learned last module and let's keep moving this forward. OK, I'm not going to take the time to construct a new message to Grant. But we'll go see what they thought would be an appropriate response to Graham. Active listening. Oh, you're worried too. Good. When can you come meet us? Because we're worried. You're worried. What's next? OK, Grant said I can meet or talk tomorrow afternoon. Go ahead and assign me a job. I'll put in the extra time next week. And Emma says, OK, but don't miss any more meetings, exclamation point. Um, how has Emma failed to use good conflict communication technique in her last check chat message? Sounds like a threat. <laughs> Sounds like a threat. I'm going to say it also doesn't reflect Grant's proposal. Grant actually gave a suggestion. Hey, just assign me some extra work. I, I'll get to it later. Um, I got to be honest with you. The first. Um, oh, it's unfair to the rest rest of the team as well. Um, and it, it each one of these look, they spent a lot of time giving feedback for each answer here. Um, not missing any more meetings is an appropriate team rule. But one of the things Collaborative U tries to teach the students is setting up the team guidelines ahead of time and then sticking to them. Um, so they're saying like, hey, it's OK to say somebody, hey, don't miss any more meetings if you've all agreed to that. At the beginning, so, you know, I. I I, I kind of like how this is kind of walking them through this, and this is a really good example of how OLL tries to tries to structure all of their course content by making students go through like an activity or a scenario that really makes them apply what they just learned. OK, how could Emma improve this assertive communication? Um, I'll, I'll do all three. Let's let's see what they say about this. Um, OK, I was wrong. It says don't offer a different solution before you respond to the current solution that's on the table. OK, I, I'll, I'll take that feedback. Um, and we'll go on to the next question. OK. OK, so what they say is wish him luck on his test set another meeting time um, and move forward. And that's the end of the, act the activity. So this, this was just a little, you know, a short little activity um, that OLI built around the central 
learning objective that they felt was important for this. And so you can see that a lot of the, the modules in Collaborative View will be built just like that, where you have a small amount of information immediately into some kind of activity that the student can do all by themselves. And then you're going to see that in the student dashboard um, after the end of the class. Um, you'll be able to see who's completed their activities, who's done their homework, how they did, um, and be able to track all of that through what they call their learning dashboards. So now, Ed, the learning dashboard could be linked into or dropped into our Blackboard? System. Yeah, so when we when I first went through, I'll I'll, I'll show you that. Um, when I first click on the link here as the instructor, I see I've got I can go right to the course, go to the course syllabus. I can go to manage the course or I can go to the learning dashboard. Now mine will be blank because this is just like a demo course. But when you look at it, you know, it says, OK, our one student in the class has done the class participation. Um, here are my open ended questions that might need to be answered or responded to. Here are the checks points and quizzes that they have done. Um, and it will it tries to break down. Um, it, it, it tries to break down by learning objective where students are doing well and struggling. So it's 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 like an item analysis um, that you can look at um, that might help you know like what you need to go over or reinforce in class. Um, they work really hard um, in Collaborative U to try to make sure all the activities are matched to their learning objectives. That way you can get some idea of how your students are doing. OK, OK. Did that help? Yes, thank you. OK. So we don't have a lot more to show you, um, but we can if you guys have questions about specific aspects, we can take you and we can look at the syllabus together. If you want to look at different like, for example, I can show you again on my screen. Um, this is I'm clicked into my course, the one that Ed and I share here for OLI. Um, can you guys see my it says syllabus for OER demo? Mm -hmm. OK, great. So here are the units that we were discussing before. This is in the um, original o, um, OLI version. If there's any specific areas of this that you guys want to look at, we can click through it and look at the activities, look at what happens. Um, or if you guys want to see anything from the instructor side, like the last question, this is really up to you guys to let us know what you want to see. My question is usually like, what are the students think about this? How are um, what happens when we use this um, in a course? And we also have some uh, feedback from the students that did it at Binghamton University as part of that chem course. So we can also look at that. Sure. If there aren't specific things that you guys want to see. Hey, Julie. Hey, um, hold on one second. Am I there? All right. My dog just decided to start barking after something, so I might might not make it to the end of this question. But um, I love this and I want it. And uh, I wondered, um, I guess I have two questions. One, what do you do if a student doesn't do it? And then two, does the does the gradebook of it translate into the Blackboard gradebook? And and or like, are there options for like for something like this? I could see wanting to use it as a um, like a pass fail even regardless of what grade they get in the the module. Um, is there a way to do that easily? Yeah, so um, it doesn't integrate like very seamlessly into the Blackboard gradebook um, because it has its own gradebook where you can see each individual like activity that we, you saw there or each post test that will all record there in its own separate gradebook and then it can pass back only like one grade to Blackboard which would be like their running total. Um, so if you said, hey, I want to just do this pass fail um, and, and did they do it or did they not do it? That would be the easiest thing to do because we would just um, 
set it up and we'd, you'd do one grade column when they were completed. Um, but in when you go to the when you go to Carnegie Mellon, you can see the detailed breakdown of when did they do it? What did they do? Where did they get it? All the all the test quizzes, um, formative assessments. Some things are just, you know, up or down. Did they do it? Other things are kept for a grade, uh, but all of their interactions are are logged and um, recorded in there. So how do I get it? Into my Blackboard course. Yeah, we'll get to that. That's a, that's our last slide. What? Oh my God. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait. Here, we can put the link right in here for you. And we also loaded one demo of it into Blackboard. And what I'll do is I'll look at the attendee list of everyone who's here and I'll load it. I'll load you into that course as students if you would like. And um, you can kind of look through the content just like your students would have access. Uh, Sarah just giving me a thumbs up. Right. <clears throat> so the way you get this um, is you start out by registering for an instructor account with OLI. So I put the link in the chat here. Um, I guess I'll also for our viewers that are in the video recording, I'm going to go to the end. Sorry if I'm making you sick. This is in case the internet didn't work. <laughs> OK, can we do the feedback from Binghamton too? Yeah, Jen? I will um, for sure. Yeah. Let's do that. So um, you can also look at the other OLI options um, by going to oer.suny.edu, um, which you can look at demo versions of all of these ideas too. Um, from there, if you're sure you want it, you register for an instructor account with OLI. And once you do that, you have access to the entire OLI, OLI catalog. So you don't have to just get collaboration. You, you can get um, a bunch of other options, which also we're going to talk about. Um, and then also, if you just aren't really sure what to do, just contact us <laughs> at RI. Um, so going back a little bit to what Ed was saying, um, Oh, now it's showing my notes. Great. Super helpful at this point um, to me anyway. Hopefully not to you guys. <laughs> um, so what do students think? These are um, outcomes from back to the Binghamton University experience in fall 2020, um, 2021 spring. And um, they they took two ways of looking at it. These responses are kind of overall. How did your how did you feel in the research lab? Do you feel like you can do research going forward? It's a little hard to read. I'm sorry, but the point is that the purple is, is that the students felt they made a very large gain, and the green are that they felt they made a large gain. And these questions are all based around: Do you feel confident um, in the research process? Um, my screen is so tiny, I actually can't, I can't read the, <laughs> the text right now, which I didn't expect. But as a basic outcome, the students felt like a lot of gains around their research confidence. Um, and then a second group of slides here, this came from responses from the um, Chem 111 course, which was the Binghamton University course in, um, for the engineering majors. And this, these questions were specifically about um, about um, how you felt about working in your teams, which, as I mentioned before, the instructor had said engineering students work in teams throughout their entire college experience. So starting an early semester experience with this team building activity um, that it's again hard to see, but I think it's the um, green Yellow is a lot of um, positive and green is not as like still positive. Sorry about the size of the slide. Strongly um, agree and agree. Yeah, strongly agree and agree. I can't read it on my own slide. Um, and um, the last question here is specifically about Collaboration U and there was nobody that disagreed that Collaboration U didn't help them with their teamwork, which is a positive outcome also. Um, but from the instructor point of view, what they said during the presentation was they saw better outcomes um, from the instructor point of view in the teamwork. There was less um, conflict. There was less people coming to the instructors saying we had problems and ask, asking instructors to help them deal with their problems. 
um, and then learning their learning outcomes they felt were, were very good. And this is, I thought, very impressive for a revamped course and the first run through of it. They had just a very positive experience. And then we did have one more slide in here between here about if you are interested in seeing some of these other OER, uh, sorry, OLI options through the SUNY OER services, there are some examples here. Actually, Conflict U is meant as a second unit to, um, you can do Collaboration U, and then if you really want to get into how to deal with conflict communication, Conflict U kind of takes it one more, mod, like one more set of modules around those issues so you can put those together if this is something that is really important in your class or to your students um, you can look into adding conflict you to that we also have the student cognition toolbox and the stem readiness options um, both of those are about um, study skills well especially the st student cognition toolbox is about study skills things like that um, and then stem readiness is oriented about workplace communications, the importance of how you write for specifically for STEM oriented students, and then a learning to learn. Um, I don't know a lot about that one. Ed, what do you know about that one? The learning to learn was the older one. I don't know if it has been replaced by the student cognition toolbox. Um, the student cognition toolbox just came out um, in the last year, and it was something that they came out of that they were very proud of, um, happened through some, um, collaborations with some student learning centers um, and they really focus on like here are some concrete study strategies that you can try and how do I d identify which strategy will work for what kind of course what kind of test and um, try to help students think about that um, you know it's something that we talk about all the time you know sometimes our gr best students um, have strategies that they brought with them from high school, things like flashcards, things like um, rereading that have worked really well for them on factual based um, tests and quizzes, which are you know more prominent. And then they come to, to college and they're being more asked to apply or asked to um, do something a little bit different and they feel kind of out of water here and I really like how this one is set up I was I was going through it just this morning looking at it and saying like hey how do I identify when the strategies that I have might be good for a specific instructor for a specific type of um, test or type of unit um, and what should I be doing to help me study so I I, I really like um, the student cognition toolbox And then back again to how do you find all this stuff? All of those things are available at the SUNY Ready to Adopt catalog at this top link, oer.suny.edu, and then um, the instructor account is available at that website. So we kind of prefer, and we showed you how to um, integrate it into Blackboard because then the students don't need to have their own usernames and passwords to be able to do that. Um, I got a question through the email that said, hey, what if I didn't want to do it through Blackboard? Um, what if I wanted to use it for like student organizations? Is there a way to do it? We can use any of these OLI courses kind of standalone. Just students would have to register and make their own username and password and we'd give them like a code. So you'd say like, oh, go into OLI and register with this code and it will automatically load you into the class, that kind of thing. We kind of like to keep things like in Blackboard. Um, but if there was somebody, so if there was somebody that wanted to use it outside of Blackboard, like a, a club or for, you know, a, a, a faculty reading group or something like that, we could either make you your own Blackboard space, we can always do that, where you could load students into Blackboard, or we could try to give you access outside of OLI, and we can talk through those and pros and cons of either thing. Um, but yeah, we can absolutely make sure you have access to it. So Ed, that, that was me, um, Bill, and the reason I asked, I, I have Blackboard fine for when we're doing it with the actual student leaders, but what I would like to do is to review the materials with some colleagues from some other campuses and see how we can best use it for club organizations, and I know they can't get into Blackboard, so that's kind of why I'm asking. Yeah, and, and, and um, especially for something like trying to collaborate across the system, 
um, reach out to SUNY OER. We'll, we'll reach out to SUNY OER services with you um, because um, that's the type of things that they would love to be able to show is possible through OER um, collaborations across different campuses um, and how you choose to use it. So yeah, we'll be in touch, Bill. <laughs> Ed, any any news? Um, you're using this word Blackboard a lot, and supposedly we're getting rid of Blackboard. <laughs> well, first of all, we're not getting rid of Blackboard for a while. Um, our current contract goes through December of 2022, um, and any changes would be after that. So um, while that is looming, that there has been an RFP to replace Blackboard, it's not happening tomorrow. The second thing is since we're using a system that integrates into Blackboard um, using LTI, um, Learning Tool Interoperability, any platform that we would move to from Blackboard would also have LTI. So the same resources would integrate into Canvas, Desire to Learn, Moodle. That's part of the reasons why the OER is made um, in this way on kind of an external platform that can integrate in is because they can then create it to integrate into any system, which is also um, good for things like collaborating across SUNY because we have a lot of colleges in SUNY that use different systems um, like Moodle or Canvas or, or other than Blackboard. Right, right. But that's thank you. Thank you for clarifying. That's good. Yeah. No, it's an important question. Um, this actually sets us up very well. I think what we should do at this point is um, we'll stop the recording and sometimes there are questions that people didn't want on the recording and